It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. Today, two outstanding elementary schools here to play our game, hoping for the chance to move on to the semifinals and ultimately the championship of this year's Science Bowl. You know, because of the pandemic, everything has changed. All of our students are safely at home. I'm here in the studio, the Science Bowl studio, and behind me, you can see part of the familiar part of our set here, the game board. We haven't changed that but we've changed the way we do the game here. Yes, everybody still gets 50 points just for showing up and looking good. No, there are no penalties for incorrect answers, but each team gets 18 questions just for them, a five, a 15, and a 25 point question in each of our six categories. That has not changed. Our categories remain the same. And if you're not familiar with our game, here are our six categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's Get Physical, questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions, everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. It is now time to meet the first of our three players. They hail from Northview Elementary School. Three outstanding young ladies. And would you please welcome the Captain Taylor. Taylor, would you wave to everybody, please? Hey, Taylor. She is a fifth grader. She's joined by Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Wave to everybody at home. And also, Eden, Eden, would you please wave? All right, let's start our game. Let's go to the green things questions. And there's a five, a 15, and a 25 point question. All right, girls, do your best. Here we go, five points in green things. It is said that grass does not grow under the feet of active people like you guys. Another way of saying that is none of this green thing gathers on a rolling stone. Hey guys, what do you think? Um, What's so. a green thing that would not grow? Make sure you unmute yourself so I can hear you. Make sure you're unmuted there. All right, any ideas? What does not gather, what green thing does not gather on a rolling stone? It's moss. Uh -huh. Moss is the right answer there. Let's go to the 15 point question. You may get this one. This is kind of strange. To get cows to make less of that stinky gas methane. Farmers are now feeding their cows these green things that sometimes you see laying on the beach where the water comes in that includes things like algae. What do we call those green things lying on the beach that they're now feeding to cows? Maybe seaweed? You yeah. got it. Seaweed is it. Now you're cooking. That's the way to do it. I like how you're talking to each other. Green things for 25 points. Vegetables that are grown aboard the International Space Station can't and don't rely on soil. There's no soil in space, but rather they are grown entirely in water that nutrients have been added to. What H initial term describes this kind of farming? Uh, I think it might start with hy uh, hydro. Yeah. Um, hmm. Hydro. Yeah, they said water, so it'll probably be hydro something. Got the hydro part right, the prefix right, and the suffix is hydroponics. Hydroponics. In fact, you can buy lettuce in the store and it's in a, in a container and it says hydroponic lettuce because it's grown in water. All right, let's move on to the zoo. Zoo prayed for five points. A politician who has lost an election or can no longer run for re-election is called a lame one of these barnyard birds. 
A lame what? Duck. Duck is right. Good answer. Next, we have a picture for you. You girls are doing a nice job. Zoop great for 15 points. Here is a picture. Here you can see a giraffe standing next, uh, next to these weird castles of clay. Mysterious castles of clay describes the perfectly engineered nests of these social insects, often called white ants. What insects are known as white ants, and they are social insects. Um, that picture was in Africa. I only think of fleas, but I don't know. You know, social insects include bees and wasps and ants and termites. Termites are the white ants. They make those huge castles there that are perfectly air conditioned. They're amazing, amazing engineers. 25 points in zoo. There is a scientist, a naturalist by the name of Alan Root, who said of this animal, and I quote, the first word in the dictionary, the last word in anteater design. What animal is he talking about? The first word in the dictionary, the last word in anteater design. It's an aardvark. A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K. So the double A puts it at the beginning of the dictionary. Let's go to the body systems. I know you guys text. I know you're on social media. You'll get this one. If you're texting and trying to convey the feeling of, however, you invoke what body part with O-T-O-H? Um... I think it might be a finger. Maybe your hand. Your hand, your hand, O-T-O-H. On the other hand, that's your, that's your way, your abbreviation when you text, if you wanna say however, on the other hand. Good, thank you, Eden. Let's go to 15 points in the body. This is, boy, this is awful. A surfer in Australia recently had a Coke bottle sized chunk of his gastrocnemia muscle ripped out by a shark. The gastrocnemius muscle is better known by this name, also the name of a baby cow. A cow? Half a cat. Yes, yes. All your eyes lit up on that one. Good. Yourself, got yourself 15 points. 25 points, multiple choice to end this first round. You're doing good. In a recent Peanuts comic strip, Snoopy the Beagle, he's, he's a funny guy. Snoopy the Beagle wonders why his little bird friend is feeling ill while playing baseball. Snoopy's diagnosis, he's got hyponatremia. H-Y-P-O-N-A-T-R-E-M-I-A. So, does the little bird, is it low in blood sugar, low in salt, or high on caffeine? Hyponatremia, the little bird, low in blood sugar, low in salt, or high on caffeine? I think it's low in blood sugar. Same. Actually, uh, if you know anything about chemicals, natremia refers to salt. So you sweat a lot when you're out there playing. So he is low on salt, so he's going to need a salt tablet to keep him going, you know, in the extra innings. All right. You end that round with 90 points, a good start. We'll give you a break. We'll bring you back in just a few moments for your last nine questions. Congratulations. It is now time to meet the team from Rogers Heights Elementary School. Three outstanding young men, and here they are. The captain of the team is Jonathan. Jonathan, would you wave to everybody at home, please? There he is. Next, another sixth grader is Yael. Yael, wave to everybody. Thank you, young man. And rounding out the triplet, Kit team here is Juan. Juan, nice to see you as well. All right, gentlemen, let's get to your green things questions. Three of them. First one is worth five points. Here we go. Olaf the snowman in the Frozen movies has one of these root vegetables for a nose. Carrot, 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 carrot. Keep falling out, too. Let's go to 15 points for green things. To find out how old historic homes are, 
some tree specialists, known as arborists, will use dendrochronology, taking small samples of existing lumber in the homes and counting these. Rings. Rings, the rings there. Count them because the space between the rings lets you know how many years and what kind of years they were, good ones or bad ones for the tree. For 25 points in green things, I have a picture for you, a visual question. What you're looking at here is called the daughter plant, D-O-D-D-E-R. It is a parasite. Basically, it is just a stem that coils around host plant, sucking out water and nutrients from the host. And even though it does flower, it lacks what two plant parts that other plants require to live. It is just a stem. And even though it does flower, what two plant parts are missing that you would find in any other normal plant required for it to live? Um, what, what are you guys thinking? I would think I'm it's probably... I'm thinking the middle part of the plant. I mean, well, that would be the stem probably, but no, I like think it would Keep in probably mind, it is already a stem. The daughter plant is all, it is just a stem. So what two parts are missing? Um, Petals? No, wait, the leaves are missing? The leaf is one. Uh, What's the other? Um, the anthers. The root. The root. It has oh. no roots and it has no leaves. Good try, guys. Let's go to the zoo. Because they, too, live on both land and water, crocodiles, which are reptiles, and seals and beavers, which are mammals, can still be called these, a group that includes frogs and toads. Amphibians. Amphibians is right. Good. You listen carefully to all those clues. You did that really well, guys. For 15 points, tsetse flies. That spells T-S-E-T-S-E -S -E -S -E, that live in Africa. They're different from most other insects in that they don't lay eggs, but rather hatch the eggs inside in a uterus they produce a milk-like substance just like mammals do. And then after nine days, they give birth to these, the second stage in most insects' metamorphosis. Mm. I, think it is, guys? I think it'll probably be the caterpillar. Or... But it's another name for that stage. But the cocoon? No, metamorphosis? The... Larva, the larva is the correct answer there. The larva, the caterpillar is the larval stage. All right, nice try, guys. Let's move on to the 25-point question in the zoo. Unlike the tails of some lizards, those tails that were chopped off by, of the three blind mice by the farmer's wife's carving knife, those don't grow back. A mouse losing its tail does not undergo what process? That Regeneration? brings back. Regeneration? Regeneration. That's it. 25 points. Good work. Yael. No, that was one. That was one. Yeah, that was me. Yes, indeed. Body systems. Three more questions for you guys. You're doing well. Here we go. In the Croods movie, C-R-O-O-D-S, in the Croods movie about a Neanderthal family, the family vehicle isn't a car. It's a rainbow-colored, saber-toothed, one of these felines. Um, Any ideas? A, a, I think it was a lynx or a leopard. Wait, probably a cheetah. Um, any idea, Jonathan? I was thinking of probably a saber tooth, but uh, wait. But that's not it. Oh, sure. Yael, he was, he was mentioning all the felines. He knew, he knows a lot of them. It's a saber-toothed tiger, a saber-toothed tiger. That's the one from way back when. Some of you if remember some of those uh, uh, movies. I'm trying to think what it was with, uh, there was a sloth, there was, uh, there was a saber-toothed tiger in there. It was a whole series of them. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the 15-point question in body. One of the startling discoveries of what COVID does to the body was the presence of these in the heart, brain, lungs, and liver, things that are produced naturally in a normal working body 
by platelets. Ooh. Any ideas? I think it will probably be blood, but I'm not sure that it would be blood. Blood cells? Blood cells could be one. Skin cells? Say it again, please, one. Um, what you just cells, said. Probably? Say it. Skin cells? Nope, nope. Blood is part of it. It's blood clots, blood clots, because the platelets are the things that clot that help to form a scab after you cut yourself. Let's move on to the 25-point question in the body systems. If an athlete like a football or basketball player needs arthroscopic surgery, name one of the possible places in the body that's giving that athlete problems. Legs. Are you all saying something here? Arms? I, I say either legs or knees. Knees is right. Oh. Knees is correct because arthro means joint. So arthroscopic sur surgery is when you go in and you treat a joint like a, a wrist or an elbow or a knee. Thank you, Yael. All right. We're going to give you 125 points for that round. And that movie I was trying to retrieve was The Ice Age, where you saw a saber-toothed tiger. All right, guys, you did a really nice job. Congratulations. We'll see you again in a couple minutes. All right, we welcome back the North U team. And before we ask them their last nine questions, let's find out about these outstanding young ladies representing that school out there in Bowie. And let's go to the captain, and that would be uh, Taylor. Taylor, tell us a little bit about how you guys prepared for this. Um, well, we, we were practicing pretty, we practiced every day for roughly an hour and afterwards he would always do like a little mini zoom meeting to go over what we learn notes and do different things to help us prepare for science book. Wow. You sound like you were very disciplined and I can tell you take this seriously and I like how you're listening to all the clues and uh, Northview has been on our show for many, many years and, and always has done extremely well and I know how uh, proud you're coach Miss Mathis is of what you've got what you guys have done everybody wins just by being here today uh, someday what do you want to do Taylor have you given, given any thought to that um, I kind of want to become a music lawyer I enjoy playing the violin and I'm applying for an art school but I've always thought I'd be a great lawyer and I've heard of music lawyers so I probably want to become a music lawyer I think that's a great niche, a music lawyer. And that sounds like, you know, if you, if you like to argue and you win your arguments and you're a great musician, that's a perfect marriage there. Nice to have you here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go over and find out Sarah. Where is Sarah? Sarah, why did you want to do this? Why did you want to be on the science ball? We're glad you did, but why did you want to do it? I thought that being on the science ball would be a great opportunity because uh, my teacher, Ms. Bija, she recommended it for me, and then my parents, they said yes to it. So when I came on at first, that I feel like it's been a big boost to my learning, and I really enjoy it. Well, we enjoy having you here, and we hope that, you know, you're letting us know what you know, and hopefully you're learning some things through the questions that I'm asking here today. And someday, what are you going to do? Um, I want to be a photographer because uh, photography, I feel like, it, you can tell any story with just one picture, but at the same time, I want to be a lawyer or a type of scientist. You have a lot of time to figure that out, and you can be a couple of those things. And you're right about photography. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, you know, and that is so true. Nice to have you here, Sarah. And let's talk to your last member here of the Northview team, and that is Eden. Eden? Nice to have you here today. You know an awful lot about science. You're popping up with a lot of answers there. How do you know so much science? Um, well, I feel like it's just, you know, our coach, Ms. Mathis, and, you know, the background knowledge I've learned from my parents and, you know, just my personal experience in learning. Um, and, you know, just me researching things, you know, trying to learn as much as I can, because in the future, I'm going to need to know those things for, you know. Right. And it sounds like yeah. you're, you're a good observer, because if you pick up things that are going on around you, that becomes part of your database, if you will. And what do you want to do someday? Um, so I've been debating what I've wanted to do for a long time, um, you know, but either I want to become a musician or either, you know, maybe become a writer because I love to write, but I love to sing. 
and I want to learn how to, you know, play the guitar. Um, so yeah, but I never know, you never know what you're going to become when you grow up because I believe that those are just things that you want to do and you aspire to be, but you never know if that's actually going to happen. You just have to strive to do what you want to do. It's always good to have goals, but things are going to happen in your life. You're going to meet people. You're going to have opportunities that you can't even imagine now that may give you an epiphany like, wow, I never even thought about that. Maybe a book you read. You're a fine young lady and you're a great contestant. Thanks for being here today. All right. I have nine more questions for you. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Give me two thumbs up if you're going to get all nine of these right. That's what I like to see. I like confidence. Here we go. It is let's get physical. Three questions. Here's your first one for five points. You know, sometimes you can go into a cave and you can see those rock icicles hanging down called stalactites and stalagmites. There's some in nearby Virginia. They're composed of, get this, there's lava in some of them, mud, peat, and even the crystallized urine of rats. Imagine that. But the main ingredient is this metallic mineral with the symbol CA, capital C, small a. What does that stand for? What chemical element? Uh, I think it's crystals. Yeah, I agree. I think we're going to go with crystals. I spotted you the first two letters, C-A-L-C-I-U-M, calcium. Calcium is that chemical symbol, C-A. For 15 points, you'll get this one. If something, if, if something you're cooking catches on fire, don't try to run it outside or throw water on it. Better put a lid on it or sprinkle it with sodium bicarbonate better known as baking what? Soda. 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 That's it. Good for 15 points. Perfect. All right, girls, now it's time for the 25-point question in Let's Get Physical. Here it is. Weathering and erosion can lead to the sudden movement of soil down a hill. What term describes that event as well as a large number of votes in an election like the one we just had? Sometimes when a house is on a hill and the soil gives way, everything comes down. That, that describes the same thing as an election where an awful lot of votes, votes were won. Um, a landfill or a mudslide? Ooh, close. Landslide? That's it, that's it. Take half of each. That's the way to do it, Taylor. It is a landslide. Good work, 25 points. Let's go to potpourri. President-elect Biden revealed he had a lifelong, he has had a lifelong problem with this condition that makes it hard for him to speak clearly, getting hung up occasionally with repeating syllables in certain words. Um. I thought maybe you had heard because he has talked about this uh, frequently. He stutters. It's called stuttering. Let's go to the 15 point question in potpourri. Okay. AstraZeneca had to stop its vaccine rollout because the company discovered that the people in the test group for the vaccine were given too little of the vaccine compared to the opposite group receiving the placebo. That group is known as what group in an experiment? The test and the what? Our control. The control is right. Thank you, Sarah. Nice job. Let's move on to the 25 point question in potpourri. Good answer. There's just one queen in a beehive, one queen in an ant's nest, one queen termite in a colony, because the queen produces a chemical known as queen's substance that prevents what female reproductive organs from functioning in the other females in the nest. Reproduction, so, but, what, what, you know, what? Female reproductive mean? organs. Um, We're talking about ovaries, ovaries here. Ovaries was the right answer. Let's go into the dateline. I have a picture for you for dateline for five points. We'll bring the picture up. This is a very famous photo that we're going to show you. Back in 1934, much of the world thought that this picture 
confirmed that a prehistoric plesiosaur lived in a lake in Scotland. They called it what? The Loch Ness Monster. Say it again. The Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness. It is it the Loch Ness Loch Monster. Loch Nicely done. Wonderful. Let's go to the 15 point question in Dateline. Well, today we're looking for the perfect COVID vaccine. Back in 1922, America was looking for a vaccine for this viral disease that affects the respiratory system and begins with a silent P. A silent P? The name of the disease has a silent P at the beginning of it. Taylor, I, are you unmuted there? Because I see you moving your lips, but I can't hear you. Make sure you're unmuted. Correct answer is pneumonia. Pneumonia. P-N-E-U-M-O-N-I-A. Pneumonia. He goes, oh yeah, I know that. I knew that. All right. One last question for you for 25 points in Dateline. The giant 54-year-old Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico collapsed recently. You might have seen pictures of it on television. It famously sent a message to any possible aliens living up to 25 light years away as part of a program called SETI, S-E-T-I, an acronym that stands for search, that's the S, I is intelligence. What does the E-T stand for? Searching for what kind of intelligence? Extraterrestrial. You got it, Eden, extraterrestrial. That got you those 25 points. Nicely done, young lady. That means you end this game with 175 points. Nicely done, Northview. It's time to bring back that team from Rogers Heights and find out a little bit about these fine young men before we ask them their last nine questions. And let's go to our captain. And captain, tell us a little bit about yourself and how your team prepared for this game. So basically what we did to prepare this, this game, we would usually assign homework of studying our reviewer and um, we would have trainings wow. from mostly two hours. Wow. And every day we would review quick things and understand more about the definitions if we need to. So you had some good coaches there, Miss Rajiv and Mr. Walker and Mr. Pitt Pitt. They're all rooting for you guys. I know how disciplined they are. We appreciate all that they've done. And Jonathan, appreciate all that you've done too. What do you want to do someday, young man? I would like to be a musician and play trumpet. Wow, wow. Yeah, trumpet, a great brass instrument there. Uh, I feel it. Is there a band, a band or an orchestra at Rogers Heights? Mm, yeah, we have advanced trumpet classes and we would do concerts, but now that there's coronavirus, we don't do of course concerts. Course not. No, of course anymore. not. That's that's a real um, drawback if you're a performer. But you're performing now and you're doing well. Let's meet your teammates. Let's go and talk to Yael. Yael is also a sixth grader over there at Rogers Heights, and you seem to know an awful lot about science. I liked all those felines that you came up with. How do you know so much science, Yael? Mm, well, I basically st study each night. I sometimes write notes down. I sometimes don't because then um, sometimes my mom accidentally brought my journal. Uh -huh. and, and wait, no, it's my brother. And, and then, um, I basically listen very carefully and, and, and for clues when, oh, when we do. Well, you're a good listener. That's obvious. And uh, uh, someday, what do you want to do as a profession? Have you thought about that yet? Well, but when, when I grow up, I, I usually, there's two things, a, a, a fisherman and a cooker. A fisherman, because I usually see my dad um, going fishing lonely um, sometimes, which kind, which kind of makes me sad. So I, I want to jo join him and fish together and we don't know what we will get and for a cooker i would want to help my mom cook and for my family well you're a, you're a good brother and son and uh, wanting to accompany your dad fishing i bet he'd love to have you there and of course if you get to be a chef or a cook you can cook what you catch you know come up with some really good ways to prepare that fish nice to have you here yael let's talk to your other teammate and that is juan juan Welcome to the show. I love that Christmas tree. Did you help put that up? 
yes, I like did half of it. I hang the cane canes and the star at the very top. Wow, so that that's the crown and glory. If you put that star up there, that tree is yours. You did a nice job on that young man. Thank you. Tell me, you're welcome. Why did you want to do this? Why did you want to be on the show? Because I was hoping that I could learn more about science and most parts of the body. And it is obvious to us that you know an awful lot about science already. Would you like to be a scientist someday? Yes, I was thinking about that or a meteorologist. Meteorologist. Well, I was a TV weatherman for many years, and meteorology is a great profession. And we're taping on a day when it's supposed to be snowing out there. And meteorologists are very important people on days when there is weather coming in like that. Nice to have you here, young man. Okay, gentlemen, if you're ready, here are your last questions. We start with let's get physical. Five points. Fort Knox in Tennessee, excuse me, in Kentucky, Fort Knox in Kentucky, is home to most of America's supply of this precious metal, long associated with the mythical King Midas. Gold? Gold. Gold, yes. Remember, everything Midas touched turned to gold. Yeah, I, I think I remember that from a game, like Fortnite, because there's like a character yeah. named Midas. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Gold See, you touch. never know when science is creeping in. Yeah. Thank you very much, Juan. Here's your 15-point question, and let's get physical. The postal abbreviation for the state of Nevada is NV. Like Maryland, it's MD. For Nevada, it's NV. But it could be the chemical symbol AG, because that's a chemical symbol for what precious metal that is found in Nevada? Gold. Silver. Silver, that's it, boy. Yes, indeed, Jonathan, he knew that one. AU is gold and AG is silver. You're cooking with gas here. Keep up the momentum, guys. Here's 25 for physical. Growing edible plants on Mars, because we're going to get to Mars one day. You guys might be possible residents up there. Growing edible plants will be difficult there because an artificially made Martian soil down here on Earth, they discovered it had a pH of 9.5 meant it was too what for normal Base? plant growth? Basic. Basic is absolutely right, or alkaline. You you did all your right, your good homework there. That's coming to the fore here. Thank you very much. All right, Jonathan. Let's go to potpourri for five points, guys. Here we go. Animals don't visit spas, but they do get makeovers, courtesy of Mother Nature. Some change their fur color in winter. Snakes shed their old skin. And birds, to get a new set of feathers, will do this, which means for a while they can't fly. What do birds do to get a new set of feathers? Ooh. Any Hi ideas, guys? I was thinking of hibernate. Yeah. But hibernate would be sleeping during the winter. Yeah, they'll be bears. sleeping there in the winter for like a few months. Molting? Bears for bears. It would probably pluck its own feathers. When all those feathers fall off, all the old feathers fall off, they call it molting. They molt. Oh. Let's try the 15-point question in potpourri. We have a picture for you. Beautiful picture for this one. In fact, no Thanksgiving turkey looked like this. This is not your run-of-the-mill turkey. It looked more like a peacock. This oscillated turkey shimmers with feathers that are, I'm going to give you three choices here. Are the feathers bioluminescent, fluorescent, or iridescent? I think it's biofluorescent because usually biofluorescent would be like light, but fluorescent would mean like lighting up and basically like color. So I don't know about you guys, but what do you guys think? Mm. Yeah, I think. I think yeah. it was the third one. Yeah, I think it's the third one. Yeah, yeah, what did you say? You think it's which one? The the third one that you said. Iridescent. How about you, Juan? Um, yeah, I'm going with you. Iridescent, it is absolutely right. Good answer. All right, you got yourself those twenty. You got yourself fifteen points. Here's the twenty-five point question. Drugs that are called anti-inflammatories keep down the swelling. Let's say you hurt yourself. If it starts to swell up, anti-inflammatories keep it down. Antiseptics, if you cut yourself, help to kill off germs. 
But if you take a pill that's called an analgesic, what does it do for you? It, um, it doesn't it is... kill germs. It doesn't take down the swelling. But an analgesic does this for you, a pill. Uh, um, Prevents the germs? I'm just um, guessing that it just like stops the blood flow. Stop the blood flow doesn't it is for pain. It takes away the pain, mm -hmm. takes away the pain. Let's go to the dateline category. Here we go. For five points in dateline. At first, it seemed that President elect Biden had sprained his foot when he was playing with his dog. But a CAT scan revealed that there were two hairline breaks in his foot. What F initial term? also means a break in a bone. Wait. Oh. An idea, Johnson? An F initial term that also means a break in a bone. A That's fracture? a fracture. A fracture. Wait, did we still get it since I said it? Juan, did you say that? Yeah, I said fracture. I think you said it just as I was. You will get those points, five points indeed. For 15 points, dateline. Here it is. Biologist Grace McCabe, who died recently, helped alert the world to animals that were facing extinction, creatures that she placed on what well-known list? The animal list? The animal kingdom? Yeah, the animal kingdom. Nope, not animal kingdom. The endangered species list. Endangered species, they're the ones that are on the cusp of extinction. All right, last question for you in the game is a 25-pointer in Dateline. In the early 1920s, a long time ago, the United States was excited at the prospects of using the Colorado River and Niagara Falls as sources of this kind of power. I was gonna say horseshoe power. Because I like- I think it would be like freshwater power. All right, give me more. Tell me more about that with water. That'd be a source of water. And what kind yeah, of what kind of power would that be? Hydroelectric Wait. power. You got it. Hydroelectric. That's just what I wanted to hear, Jonathan. That's the way the reason you're the captain. 25 points. Nice job, young man. Hydroelectric gets you guys a total of 215 points, Rogers Heights. Way to go. Way to go. We really hope you enjoyed the Science Bowl today. We had fun here. We hope all of our players had fun as well. Our final tally today is Northview 175, Rogers Heights 215. Congratulations to Rogers Heights. Also to Northview, you guys played brilliantly today. And we will have the playoff game between Rogers Heights and Whitehall as we move farther along in our competition. We thank all of you for being here. We have Mr. Pit Pit here, one of the coaches from Rogers Heights. Mr. Walker is here. Also, we have Miss Rajiv, Miss Mathis, the wonderful coach from Northview, and all of our players. We have some alternates out there. Dejan, Wave, Dallas, Adiel, Angel, Ashley, and of course, our wonderful players, Jonathan, Yael, Juan, and Eden, and Sarah, and Taylor. You all did a super job. We hope you'll come back and play with us again when we have our studio back, when all of this pandemic is behind us. You guys played brilliantly, and we're proud of all of you. And all of you for watching, thank you so much. I'm Dave Zarin. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>